Hello, TikTok. Welcome to, I guess it's my eighth live, maybe my ninth. As uh, my brother Raven would say, I felt the calling to speak on the psychological aspect of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, which is the grammar technology with the mathematical interface that was brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller. The form of correct sentence structure that I teach is, from my perception, the simplest and strongest form in that everything that I teach can be certified by mechanics and by other continuances of the evidence. You don't have to take my word for it. You can look it up for yourself if you're so inclined. So anyways, what I'm gonna be talking about today is something I've been hearing a lot of people fretting and worrying about, and that's what's coming. Well, what is coming? Some people think they know, but I can guarantee you that nobody really knows what's coming. Talking about lockdowns and blah, 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 that the world's on fire, so on and so forth. What can we do about it? Here's the thing. If you're going to do something, you need a reason to do it. If you're going to move, you have to have a reason to move. If you're going to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you need a reason to do that. Otherwise, <laughs> you're not going to do anything with it, and you're probably not going to learn it because you're not going to be interested in enough in it enough to commit to studying it and doing the correct steps to learn it, i.e. studying the material that's out there and finding a tutor that you trust and that knows what they're talking about. So that's the thing. With what's coming down the pike, whatever that may be, some people fear it's a crash of society. Some people feel it's more tyranny, so on and so forth. Let me ask you something. What do you think gives the government, the legal system, the military, the police officers, what gives them authority over you? Does anybody have an answer? Feel free to pop it in the chat. What gives the government, the military, the police officers, the senators, the presidents, the kings, the queens, all those things, what gives them authority over you? Dark Moon 313, you're 100% correct. We do. When in practicality, the only individual that has authority over you is you. That's it. Now, someone can force you to do something maybe because they physically force you to do something or they make your life uncomfortable or they threaten a loved one or things like that. You can be forced to do things, but that doesn't mean someone has authority over you. For you to consent to something, that's your choice. No matter what the situation is, it's your choice. So you see these YouTubers, which thankfully I'm not one of them, but you see these YouTubers out here making these videos, screaming from rooftops. We need to take to the streets. We need to do something about this. Where we go one, we go all. Well, what are you doing? I don't see anybody out in the street doing anything. <laughs> so with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, it's easier to say that, I know. It gives you the opportunity, it gives you the tools to be your own authority. 
And the way that it does that is through the grammar. How important is grammar? Think about it, folks. Whenever you feel something, see something, hear something, touch something, taste something, smell something, what's going on there? Words come into your head when you see, hear, smell, touch, taste something. Words come into your head to try to categorize or articulate what it is you're sensing, what you're experiencing. Words come into your head to try to clarify what's going on. You almost have no control over the words that come into your head. They just come and go. Think about it. Now think about food. When you go into a store, maybe you're, you're a young child, you don't know anything about nutrition. You just know what tastes good, what smells good, and that's what you want. And you eat that. Later on, when you get more education, you cultivate your knowledge a little bit more, you start reading ingredients and you say, oh wow, that's not good for me because I read it's not good for me. Sugar is not good for me. These things make me feel uncomfortable. These things upset my stomach. So there are these little negative particles in the food that are detrimental to your health, especially taken over the long term you can develop many health problems from unhealthy food particles, i.e. particles of negation in your food. Words act the same way. They perform the same way. You get words in your head, you, can't really, you don't really have any control over them. There are so many negative particles in words and you may not know about it. Just like that kid who just eats stuff because it feels good, they don't know any better. They don't know there's poison in their food. Just like most people, they don't know there's part of, uh, poison in the words they think and use. With correct sentence structure, it gives you the tools to eliminate those poison particles, those particles of negation, just like you can eliminate them from your food by choosing better products. Same thing with grammar. With grammar, you get those particles of negation out of there, you, you you cognize what it means to use positive performance facts in your language. Even just speaking plain English, you, you learn how to do that. Now I am speaking plain English and I realize there are particles of negation all over my grammar. But the difference between myself and most people is that I know that. And because I'm aware of it, it no longer is detrimental to me because words are just words. Once you get those words on paper, that can be very powerful. And that is the, the, the domain of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the document contract, postal vessel court venue. So in the psychological aspect of the grammar, if you eliminate all those particles of negation, think of how strong your grammar will be. Instead of being controlled by the words that come in and out of your mind, now you are a steward of those words. They may come in and out of your mind, but you provide the conduit that they go through. You can decide where they go and how they land, if they land at all or if they just go right out the other side. You're no longer controlled by those things. Well, here's the thing too, you know, I just read a comment from Dark Moon and they said, if we do, they will meet us in force. Everybody has a line. Like for me, there was a very clear line about getting poked with a needle over the last three or four years. The only way I made this, my, I made this decision, this choice, 
The only way that that was gonna happen is if someone physically beat me and held me down. The only way that was gonna happen. I don't care if I got starved out, or whatever, froze out, doesn't matter. Not gonna do it, not gonna force me. You can try, but it ain't gonna happen unless you physically force me to do that. It's the only way. I made up my mind that that's the way it was gonna go. So, I mean, you gotta, you know, everybody has a threshold, a line that they will not cross. And whatever that line you think it is, once you reach that particular line, I bet you, you will go a few feet further than that. I bet your line is a lot farther, a lot closer than you think it is. You just have to find it. And so how much will you tolerate before you start doing something about it? People, a lot of people with theoretical knowledge of correct sentence structure will approach me and they will ask me, well, what is the remedy? What can correct sentence structure do to get my house back? What can correct, this guy ripped me off for two grand. What can I do with correct sentence structure to get that two grand back? If they're coming to arrest me because I've had a warrant out for a suspected murder, how is correct sentence structure gonna stop them from arresting me? Here's the answer. Well, at least not to the last, we'll save the last one for last. But to the other ones before that, it's not gonna get you two, your two grand back. It's not gonna get you your house back. Probably not, I've never seen it do that. What correct sentence structure does is stop bureaucratic trespass. And everything is bureaucratic. Everything comes from bureaucracy. Even the force comes from bureaucracy. So it commands that you become more cognizant of the contracts you make. Even in the plain, simple English fiction, babble, construct, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, you have to be more cognizant of your contracts. If you sign a mortgage, then that presupposes that you've read that contract and you agree to everything that's in that contract. If four years down the road you decide I don't want to pay this anymore, then you are reneging on your contract that you made. Was there a part in there that you didn't understand? And if you didn't understand it, then you shouldn't have signed it. This is the whole thing about contract that people don't get. The only time the correct sentence structure would be useful in a situation like that is if there were lies in the contract or something was omitted in the contract or the other contract party is not following the contract. That's the only way it would work. It's not gonna work to get you out of a contract that you are fully aware of, fully cognizant of, and you agreed to it. It's not gonna get you out of that. And getting out of is the wrong mentality anyways. It's incorrect. Because if you say, I'm gonna try and get out of this, that means that you, you've implied that you're guilty of something that you did something wrong and you're trying to get out of the responsibility of being held accountable for that. So it's not about getting out of anything. You've done nothing wrong. And if you haven't done anything wrong and someone's trying to trespass upon you, then correct sentence structure is probably the strongest thing that you can use to stop that trespass. <clears throat> Anybody has any questions about correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, feel free to ask. Looks like I got 700 likes. Wow, thank you very much. Shaka. This is the most successful stream I've had yet. Again, if any of you out there are afraid or worrying about what's coming down the pike, which none of us know what exactly that would be, 
Think about what fear is. Fear is a sensation that you create based upon something you think is gonna happen but has not happened. That's what fear is. That's like the feeling that someone has before they go on stage or maybe before they before a fight, like if they're a professional fighter, that's what they feel before a fight. It's the fear of something that hasn't happened yet, but you think something is gonna happen, so you get this weird feeling. Now, it actually can be beneficial in some cases, but in other cases, it can be completely paralyzing. <clears throat> Just keep that in mind. It's a very good uh, human instinct. Well, let's say mammalian instinct, I guess we could say, where when you're walking perhaps through down a dark street and you get that weird feeling, that weird fear type of high uh, awareness, hyper aware sensation, that's something you should probably pay attention to in that scenario. But don't be controlled by it. So if you need a reason to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, you probably better find one. Otherwise, you probably won't learn it. <clears throat> I know a lot of people tell me, you know, Jason, I want to learn this because I want to help people. You know that probably, you know, dozens of people have told me that. You know how many of those people actually followed through and learned the grammar? Zero. It never works for people that say they want to help other people. The only people that it actually works for that I've found uh, in teaching this since February of 2018 are the people that want to learn it for themselves. They want to become their own authority. They want to learn this grammar and they want to be able to teach this grammar and they want to be able to show the people around them in their immediate biospheres. Hey, look, look what I can do with this. Look what we can do. And then that, that in, in turn inspires other people to want to learn it. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's an awesome thing. And that's what I like to see the most. But anybody that ever tells me, I want to learn this because I want to help other people. They never end up learning it because that's not a good enough reason. It's cool to want to help people. Sure. But you got to help yourself first. If you're not practicing what you preach, then your correct sentence structure is probably gonna fall apart real quick. Any grammar questions, go ahead, fire away. I'm here for you. By the way, every single TikTok live stream that I've done can be found over on my YouTube channel, which has over 800 correct sentence structure videos. There's a playlist, TikTok live stream, I think it's called. Another thing about authority, and this goes, uh, this I'll talk about this because of a recent scenario <clears throat> that occurred where a former student of mine um, made up a, an experiment that he wanted to do. And uh, he wanted to, I don't know, he wanted to do something with an affidavit. And he wanted me to, to give him something to submit to a court using correct sentence structure. And the reason, okay, is anybody out there here what's wrong with what I just said? What I just said, if I were to submit an affidavit using correct sentence structure to the court or this other guy submit an affidavit using correct sentence structure to the court, what's wrong with that picture? With correct sentence structure, you would never submit to anyone or anything. There is no submission. You would never give jurisdiction of your biosphere, your live life to a fiction court. You would never do it. Again, it goes back to authority. How do they have authority over you? You gave it to them. By submitting your paperwork, you gave them authority over you, your vessel construct.
Submitting paperwork to them is not the same thing as posting roads. Let's put it that way. Not the same thing. So hypothetically, if you do post your roads and you do walk into a foreign vessel and dry dock, you must have your ship's papers in order. You must have credentialing in order. Your correct live life claim, grammatically correct, with closure on it, sea pass sea treaty, fate rip volition claim, and whatever other documents that you need to walk in there, showing that you're peaceful and neutral with the one by 1.9 grammar flag in which you would take jurisdiction over the well of the court because that flag is the flag of the land during the time of the contract, voiding all boxes and planes. That's how it works. I won't go any further than that with it, but it has nothing to do with submitting to them. It has everything to do with establishing a geometric level playing field of contract and inviting them to step onto it. 9.99999 times out of 10, they will not. Matter of fact, they will run away from it. And whether that's whether you're physically there in that foreign vessel and dry dock or whether it's through a federal postal court, which... Each and every one of us, if you know how to use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, can create your own postal courts. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise, because you can. You just got to know the grammar, and you just got to know postal mechanics, and banking mechanics, and flag mechanics. But that all comes if you get the grammar. If you, if you get the grammar, if you learn the grammar, that other stuff will come along with it, because whoever's teaching you the grammar probably knows all that stuff too. Well, at least that's the case with me. I know how to do the, all, those, all that stuff because I've been doing it for the last six years. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You don't need anyone's permission to do this. If you are your own authority, uh, authority comes from knowledge. If you know what you're doing, you can do it. Think about back when Colin David hyphen Wynn, Colin Miller, and Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould we're going into these courts claiming to be federal postal judges or federal plenipotentiary judges. Who gave them that authority? Nobody gave them that authority. They claimed it because they studied, they learned. They gave it to themselves because they knew what they were doing. You and I can do the same thing. You just gotta know what you're doing. There will be other people out there telling you that, no, 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 you can't do that. You need this guy's thumbprint. You need to study for 15 years to be a federal postal judge. <sighs> yeah, right. The same guy that said that also told a story about a 15-year-old federal postal judge. Kid must have been studying since he came out of the womb. It's <laughs> a lot of bullshit out here. That's for sure. But, uh... You won't find it here. I'm telling you, if you want to be autonomous, want to be your own authority, correct sentence structure is a wonderful way to do that. You just got to learn it. Just got to put in the hours. It took me 2,000 hours of study before I could even use this, and I didn't even have closure on it then. And now I'm probably up to somewhere around 30,000 or more. I thank everybody for joining me. And... Uh, Appreciate all the likes. See you in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video there are two tiers of membership 
Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.